The drive from Kentucky to my Airbnb in West Virginia was only going to be four and a half hours long, so I wasn't expecting the scenery to change all that much and prepared myself for a rather boring drive. I wasn't totally right. The drive had some cool things, like this industrial complex and this gas station with gas prices reminiscent of a simpler time. It wasn't until I hit the true countryside of West Virginia that I understood why a couple people have recommended it to me. The mountainside was beautiful, and every so often a small town would pop up that looked nice. Seeing this, I couldn't wait to see what my Airbnb had in store for me. The town had provided me hope that I would be staying within decent proximity of people, but Google Maps directed me into more and more woods, and it had been some time since I'd seen any signs of life. I was getting concerned. This is how people go missing. Just as I was about to double-check that I had the right destination, some cabins appeared in the distance. I had arrived. It reminded me of the cabin from Evil Dead, but was nice inside, I guess. Exhausted from walking around the Creation Museum and the subsequent drive, I went immediately to bed. Going to bed early meant I got to wake up early and get a head start on the day. I had heard about a ghost town called Thurman not far from my Airbnb and decided that that would be the first stop of the day. The drive to the ghost town was rather interesting. It was buried deep in the woods and I had to drive along this really janky bridge to get there. I had expected that the town would have been turned into a kind of tourist attraction, but when I arrived there wasn't a soul in sight. This truly was a ghost town. It was weird being the only person in a town. I decided to explore, and one of the very first things I noticed was a decayed mill. Walking through the surrounding areas, I came across an interesting message spray-painted on one of the decayed buildings. Love's not real. I found myself unable to confirm or deny the sentiment. By my estimation, I have been in love with three people over the course of my life, none of whom felt the same way. But I think a mutual feeling is necessary for it to accurately be called love. I simultaneously found the message oxymoronic in a way. Potent as its message may be, it was nonetheless a desecration of a structure that was already bearing the natural scars of lack of love, and it wasn't the only part of the town to experience such. Thurmond, West Virginia used to be a thriving railroad town, and I imagine much love was given to it, and much love occurred in it. It once saw consistent use of its hotels, meat factories, houses, and offices all of which empty today. It was a weird thought to think that I was the sole walker of a path that likely saw many feet in its day. I passed by the bank, which looks more reputable than the bank that I currently use. I also walked by a timeline of the events leading to Thurman's exodus, institutions failing, catastrophic fires and floods. I walked along the railroad and came across more run-down abandoned buildings. It was eerie in a way. Being the only person in the town drenched out by the sounds of the river next to it, but at the same time comforting. I decided to take a closer look at the river.
The water looked dirty, but it was rather cool to just experience the nature. There was quite a bit of trash on the ground, and it became very clear that this was likely the hangout spot for the inbred cannibalistic crackheads you hear about. So I went back to the town. I proceeded down the train tracks of which the town was known for, and took in the abandoned buildings I was passing. I decided to walk ways outside of town to see if the train tracks led anywhere. I noticed that the trains were CSX, which is a company whose stock lost me a lot of money on my put options, so I don't like them. Their train was littered with their logo, though, and I didn't want to indulge them with my presence, so I turned back. Once I got back into town, I thought about the experience. This was likely the only time I would be the only person in a city. It was weird but comforting. I thought about why it made me feel that way. People who are active find comfort in the city. People who are more idle find comfort in rural areas. But what does it say about people who find comfort in a ghost town? And then a thought occurred to me. I've always seen myself as caring very deeply about other people, even when that care isn't reciprocated. So perhaps being in a ghost town felt comforting, because with no one else there to care about, It presented to me the opportunity to care about the only person in my life I never thought to.